So today we're going to be talking about how to go from grams of one compound to grams of another. This is particularly useful in laboratory settings so that you can figure out um, how much of a product to actually expect and you can tell how good at the lab you actually were depending on how uh, much your lab results match these. So this is probably the most um, applicable to your, your average uh, chemist's life, but Let's go ahead and get into it. So as you can see, I already have my uh, balanced chemical equations and I've already calculated the molar masses of all necessary compounds off to the side. And now we can just go ahead and get into it. So it says how many grams of O2, so I'm gonna go ahead and say X grams O2 are needed to react with, that's R, these, are, these numbers are related words, seven grams of H2. Okay, here's where we need to start paying a whole heck of a lot of attention to who we're dealing with and when. Right now I'm currently in grams of H2, I need to get to grams of O2. Well first I need to get out of grams of H2. So I need to pick H2's molar mass and find the version of the ratio that I need. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to turn it into the ratios. So for every 2.016 grams of H2. There's one mole of H2. And for every one mole of H2, there is 2.016 grams of H2. I'm currently in grams of H2, so I need to get out of it. So I need grams of H2 to be on the bottom. That's gonna be this version. I'm gonna go ahead and plug it in. One mole H2 will be on top. And 2.016 grams of H2 will be on the bottom. Grams H2 will cancel as it's on the top and on the bottom, leaving me with moles of H2. Now I'm in moles of H2, I still wanna to get to grams of O2. Now I need that bridge between uh, hydrogen and oxygen. I'll go ahead and create that mole to mole ratio. Coefficient in front of H2 is two, so for every two moles of H2, there is one mole of O2, or for every one mole of O2, there is two moles of H2. I need to pick the version that allows me to cancel moles of H2. That's going to be the second version again. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna say one mole O2 for every two moles H2. This finally allows me to get out of hydrogen and into oxygen, which is the goal compound but I'm not in the goal unit for that compound. Right now I'm in moles, I need to get to grams, which means I again need a molar mass. But this time I need the molar mass of oxygen. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna turn this into appropriate ratios. For every 31.998 grams of O2, there's one mole of O2. Or for every one mole of O2, there are 31.998 grams of O2. I need to pick the version that allows me to cancel out moles of O2. That is going to be the first version. So I will write 31.998 grams of O2 on the top and one mole of O2 on the bottom. Moles of O2 will cancel, leaving me grams of O2, which is the unit that I wanted, which means I'm finally done setting up. Now I can actually go ahead and plug stuff into the calculator. We multiply everything on the top, so 7 times 1 times 1 times 31.998, and we divide by everything on the bottom, so 2.016 and 2 and 1. When we plug that into the calculator, 7 times 1 times 1 times 31.998 divided by 2.016 and two and one. I am left with the number 55.552083333. This is a pretty gross number. I don't wanna actually type that number out when I report things. So I'm gonna go ahead, and I'm just gonna round to two decimals. That means one, two, this is the last number I care about. Look over to see if I need to round up. Two does not make me round up, so I will drop it. So 55.55, .55. 
And then my unit that I will use will be the only English that is left in my problem and the unit that I said that I wanted, these should be the same. So 55.55 grams O2 will be my final answer. Okay, second problem. Here I have, again, balanced chemical equation, molar mass is calculated, and my actual problem. It says how many grams of potassium bromide. So I'm going to go ahead and say X grams potassium bromide are produced using 32 grams potassium sulfate. As you can see, I'm currently in grams of potassium sulfate. I need to get out of grams of potassium sulfate, which means I need the molar mass of potassium sulfate. The molar mass of potassium sulfate is here. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna write it as the uh, ratios. So for every 174.198 grams of K2SO4 potassium sulfate, there is one mole potassium sulfate. Or for every one mole, there is 174.198 grams. Didn't give myself enough room there. Pretend like I did. Now I need to go ahead and pick the version that will allow me to cancel grams of potassium sulfate. That's going to be the one with grams of potassium sulfate at the bottom. So that's going to be that second version there. I'm going to go ahead and say one mole at the top and 174.198 grams at the bottom. Grams potassium sulfate will cancel, leaving me with moles potassium sulfate. I'm in potassium sulfate. I want to get to potassium bromide, which means that I need a mole to mole ratio between these two. Potassium sulfate, potassium bromide. For every three moles, potassium sulfate, there are six moles of potassium bromide, or for every six moles of potassium bromide, there are three moles potassium sulfate. I need to pick the version that allows me to cancel moles potassium sulfate. That's going to be the second version again. I'll go ahead and plug that in. Okay, this allows me to cancel out moles potassium sulfate, which leaves me with moles of potassium bromide. Now I need to get out of moles of potassium bromide and into grams of potassium bromide. I'm close, but not quite. I, find I need another molar mass here, and I need the molar mass of potassium bromide. I've already calculated it over here. I'm just going to go ahead and write it as the two versions. So 119.002 grams potassium bromide for every one mole of potassium bromide or for every one mole of potassium bromide there are 119.002 grams potassium bromide. I need to pick the version that allows me to cancel moles of potassium bromide. That will be the one with moles of potassium bromide at the bottom. So that's going to be this first one here. I'm going to go ahead and write it out. So 119.002 grams potassium bromide for every one mole potassium bromide. This allows me to cancel moles of potassium bromide, leaving me with grams of potassium bromide, which is the unit that I stated that I wanted. So I can go ahead and plug it into the calculator. We're multiplying everything on the top. So 32 times 1 times 6 times 119 point 002, and we're dividing by everything on the bottom, so 174.198 and 3 and 1. When we plug that into the calculator, 32 times 1 times 6 times 119.002 divided by 174.198 and 3 and 1. We are left with the number 43.7210998. That's a pretty gross number. Let's go ahead and round it to two decimal places. One, two, this is the last number I care about. Look over to see if I need to round up. 
One doesn't make me round up, so I'm gonna go ahead and drop it. So I'm gonna say 43.72. This number's naked. I need to go ahead and uh, give it a unit that will actually um, represent what this number is for. Should be the unit that is left after all of your other units are canceled and the one that you said that you were looking for. So that would be grams potassium bromide. And that would be my final answer for that. Last problem, I again have a balanced chemical equation here and my actual problem along with molar masses that I will need along the way. How many grams of CH4? So X grams CH4 are needed to produce 27.4 grams H2O. Currently in grams of H2O, which means I need to get out of grams of H2O. So I'm going to go ahead and use the molar mass of H2O that I calculated here. So for every 18.015 grams of H2O, there was one mole. Or for every one mole, there was 18.015 grams. I need to pick the version that allows me to cancel grams. That will be the second version here. Grams H2O will now cancel, leaving me with mole H2O. Now I'm in an appropriate unit that I can go ahead and switch from water to methane. So I need to go ahead and connect those two, see what that ratio is. For every one mole of CH4, there are two moles of H2O. Or for every two moles of water, there is one mole of methane. I need to pick the version that will allow me to cancel out moles of water. That means I need moles of water at the bottom. That's gonna be this first version here. Allows me to cancel out moles of H2O, leaving me with moles of CH4. I'm in the right compound, but not in the right unit. I want grams, not moles, so now I need molar mass yet again, but this time I need the molar mass of methane. Already calculated it here, just need to go ahead and pick the version um, of the ratio that I need. So for every 16.043 grams of methane, there's one mole of methane. I don't think I gave myself enough room over here, so I'm going to go ahead and move it down here. Or for every one mole of methane, there is 16.043 grams of methane. Moles of methane needs to be at the bottom so I can cancel it, which means that I just need this first version here. I'm going to go ahead and plug it in. So 16.043 grams of methane will go on top and one mole methane will go on the bottom. Moles methane will cancel, leaving me with grams of methane, which is the unit that I said that I wanted. So I can go ahead and plug everything into the calculator. Remember we multiply top, across the top, so 27.4 times one times one times 16.043 divided by everything on the bottom, so 18.015 and two and one. So 27.4 times 1 times 1 times 16.043 divided by 18.015 and 2 and 1 gives me the number 12.20033861. This is a gross number. I'm going to go ahead and round it to two decimal places. 1, 2, this is the last number I care about. I'm going to look over to see if I need to round up. 0 does not make me round up. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop it and turn that number into 12.20. Unit should be the only English left in your math as well as the thing that you said that you were looking for in the beginning. So 12.20 grams CH4 will be your final answer.